Morning folks. Today we're going back. I got the soap mixed up here. <laughs> this one here comes by the way of Razor Rock. I think it's pronounced Blue Forgere. Not sure exactly how you pronounce that, but anyhow, this particular box, um, your soap's going to come in a box and uh, don't know if you're going to be able to see that or not. It's about 300 grams when you get it, roughly 10.4, 10.5 ounces, somewhere in there on the conversion there. And it comes in a uh, plastic bag like this right here. So, uh, if that's off-putting, you might want to be aware of that and find a, I guess you might say a rather large container to put uh, over 10 ounces of soap. But it's, like I say, it's running on sale right now for uh, $10.99. That, that's a pretty good bargain right there, in my opinion. Um, back when I first got this, I got the, I guess you might say, the package deal in between the uh, uh, the soap itself as well as uh, the uh, matching aftershave. I think it was like $15, if I remember right, uh, back when I got mine. Uh, I have two sets. <laughs> it is too good of a buy to pass up. I just had to have two sets. Um, got it whipped up here in a, um, this is a uh, Sarabachi bowl, and uh, it is on the drippy side. It is running, as you can see. It's, um, but when it's on the brush, it's it's not quite drippy, but it's just right on the verge. And by the way, this is a 3D printed brush. If I can get this, uh, yeah, like that. <laughs> the Shaven Sailor. It's a 3D uh, printed uh, brush handle. You got a cashmere knot in there. Yeah, there it is. It's, it's just a little bit drippy, not quite. Shaver of the day is going to be the uh, Merker 34C. Or HD just depends on uh, how you want to word it. This one here is a two-piece design, so the uh, cap has a long post on it, and it is equipped with a uh, Bozzano blade. We're gonna see how that works out today. It's been a while since I used one of them. It comes wrapped uh, just single wrap, but it's gonna have some uh, glue spots on it. And if I don't forget, I'll take it apart and show it to you, see, so you see what it looks like. Already put a hot towel to the face this morning. And we're going to be sporting the uh, Phoenix Artisan Accoutrement uh, Ice Cube. This one here is mentholated. You can kind of see I'm still healing up right there. Still got the mark. <laughs> I'll have a, uh, here pretty soon, I'll have a uh, video with the shaver <laughs> that put that mark there. <laughs> Been pretty busy the past uh, couple of weeks. Um, Last week was uh, making preparations for going on vacation. We went on vacation, and of course, then you come back and then you got to recover from vacation. And uh, plus, my son, he's in the uh, uh, Broken Arrow Pride. It's uh, the band there, and uh, they had an invite to go to the Rose Parade. Rose Parade's been canceled, and they figured that things probably weren't going to work out too well for them anyway. So they had decided they were. Uh, weren't going to go a while back and they uh, had slated on their schedule to go to some competitions one of them in particular was st louis and another one in indianapolis and um anyway it wasn't working out so uh they decided that uh due to everything that's going on with the uh, the virus and whatnot that it's probably just best to that they not go and so last, I think it was yesterday, yesterday morning perhaps. Anyhow, they have, there's been meetings going on here on the local schools, what to do with the uh, football games and basketball that'll be coming up. And, you know, they're trying, still trying to wrap their arms around what all is going on, what to do, how to do, if to do, all that sort of thing. I do know that in less than a month, for instance, they are going to be starting school think like uh, August the 19th. And here, I say we live in Tulsa, but we're so close and the way they got things divided up, uh, the kids go to Broken Arrow School still. And uh, the way Broken Arrow's got things divided up, that there's options available for the kids and parents to what to do with the kids and going back to school. In other words, you can go virtually because uh, uh, Broken Arrow Schools are used Chromebooks. So that is a, I guess you might say, a big plus for a lot of folks that are really concerned about sending their kids back to school. 
You don't necessarily have to. You can do it virtually, or you can do what they call a blended, or you can just send them to school. Just depends on you know what your needs and wants are, and uh, they're still trying to sort that out. But pride, though, the BAM is how can you say full steam ahead with practicing, getting geared up, almost as if things were normal, and um, it's been really busy. In other words, uh, the schedule here of late right now. Um, he starts band practice at 7.30, so I uh, have him there. Well, yeah, I have him there at 7.30 to actually start at 8, but the preference is to get him 30 minutes early in case there's any issues. And so uh, you got to get around, get out the door, get him there by 7.30. Band practice starts at 8. And consistently, uh, I guess you might say the end of the band practice is around 3.00. Somebody's got to be around to take him to practice, pick him up from practice. Any other curricular activities like, you know, uh, they're washing cars, you know, to raise money, selling uh, mattresses, you know, stuff like that. It's been a little busy. <laughs> then I got work. Stuff you got to do around the house. And uh, on top of all of that, when we went on vacation... There was something that my wife was uh, had been talking about. It was a while back. We had got rid of our 1993 Chevy conversion van. Help put things in perspective. That third row seating, in other words. She was missing it. So when we got back, you know, I just decided, you know, just to take a look at uh, what vehicles were even available with third row seating without getting a 17 passenger van or something of the sort. I haven't looked in a while. Even I myself have not made a car payment in many years. Car payments is just not one of my things I like to do. Most of my cars, in other words, you know, save up some money, pay cash for them and yeah, don't like making car payments. Insurance is higher. They're usually the tag is higher, blah, blah, blah. I just, for me, like, um, yeah, not a big fan of making car payments. <laughs> so, anyway, I was been looking at them and just happened to stumble. I did find one that was closer to, how you say, my price range. Wife said it was too old. Of course, a lot of the vehicles I buy are old. Like I say, 1993 Chevy van, Ford truck is a 1992. Uh, the next closest one that I bought is a 2007 Ford, uh, Ford Focus. So you can kind of see what's going on there. Older vehicles that you can usually have enough money to pay cash for. So anyway, stumbled across a, a Nissan Pathfinder with third row seating. I had found another one. It was red. Looked great. Price was like, nah, I'm not paying that much. Well, this other one was somewhat less. Wife wasn't exactly insistent, but she was very encouraging that I should go look at it. <laughs> you know how wives can be when they're very being very encouraging. Uh, so anyway, I am a now proud owner of the Nissan Pathfinder. Making car payments, and so for me, that's like a, a life changing event. There, when you're, I have not made payments on a vehicle in a good number of years <laughs> almost as long as I've had, you know, it's been longer, yeah, it's been about that long. In other words, I've had this facial hair for, for over 20 years, so that ought to help you out a little bit. So, as it goes for stress level. Oh, yeah, it's there. Nissan Pathfinders are not cheap. I did get a used one, but even at that, they're still not cheap. This one here has third row seating. It's a base model. <laughs> In other words, I was going as cheap as I could go. <laughs> Much rather had the red one, but it was definitely not. Those numbers were too tall for me. Anyway, so now we got a new car in the family, a new new to us car. 
my th son's all excited. He's wanting to drive it. <laughs> if you ever see him drive the coat, drive the go karts, you'd understand the reason why I'm laughing. Because like, mm -mm, not anytime soon. <laughs> him and go karts, you know, he like he loves those tires on the side of the track. He's always bouncing into them. But we did go out Sunday and did some uh, driving in a parking lot. Oh, it's about a half a mile from here. There's what they call a uh, Metroplex from here. It used to be a shopping center, a uh, shopping mall. And uh, they turned it into a Metroplex. And some of the businesses, you know, started leaving the mall. And uh, on a Sunday, the, the parking lot is somewhat empty. So you can go all the way around the mall. So you know where you got a circle track, if you will. It's got speed bumps, stop signs, you know, trying to get him used to stopping, starting. And then I got him going up and down the uh, the parking lot, making left-hand turns, right-hand turns, parking when there's no other cars available to hit. <laughs> yeah, it's been pretty busy. He was going to go yesterday again, but after band practice, he was, uh, I guess you might say, wore out, tired. I think he's probably a little bit uh, wore out from the heat. I know last week, we had several days with uh, heat warnings from, I think, around noon until 8 o'clock at night. In other words, the heat index was around 105, 110. It was a little warm. Blade's doing pretty good. In other words, I'm kind of behind on my uh, McCurr razors on Sundays. Missed a couple of Sundays, so I probably need to get caught up. This one here is a, it is a pretty smooth shaver. Uh, just pick your blade, see what works best for you. While I'm thinking about it, I'll go ahead and take it apart, and I'll do the rest of this. Like I say, it is a two-piece design. I put it together upside down. That's how I put everything together when it comes to a shaver like this. Oh, sorry. That's what it looks like there. If you're not used to seeing a two-piece. There it is. And get it turned around here. There's the blade right there. It fits in there. Uh, as it goes for blade alignment, when I use this, I haven't had any issues with it. To me, it's uh, pretty easy uh, to put, you know, just plop the blade in there. So in other words, see if I can show this be kind of hard make sure I can it's kind of hard with the way I got this set up to see if I'm even really showing you what's going on but anyway it's a lot like that right there and believe it or not I put it together I use a towel I just put everything on a towel about waist high on the cabinet there put it together and like I say most of the time I I I have to be honest I have not had a time where I've had to adjust it it just fits together just fine it works well for me it's a pretty nice shaver Go and price on a Merker 34. See if you're unfamiliar with uh, that particular kind of shaver. It'll run, it depends where you get it, but usually right around the $35 mark. In other words, I haven't had any trouble finding it right around that price range. And you might be able to find one on the buy sell trade somewhere used uh, for less than that. Because that, that's, I uh, guess you might say, a new price. Pretty smooth shave, easy going, straightforward. Uh, not aggressive. Uh, put it on the top end of mild to the bottom end of the medium aggressiveness, maybe for some folks. Really depends, you know, where you add on your technique. It's a good one to not only start out with. I mean, you know, there's a number of folks that it's their favorite shaver. They continue right on shaving with it. Uh, I guess you might say you don't necessarily outgrow it. That might be a good way of putting it. It's a it's a pretty smooth shaver, and that's, for me, that's what a lot I work towards. I mean, I don't, with my normal routine that I just use right now, uh, no, not BBS, but I my, my shave is it's spot on in the way of smooth, comfortable. By the end of the day, there's not going to be a 5 o'clock shadow, and it probably, you know, may even depend a lot on your, uh, how fast your beard grows. Uh, but for me, this is, this works out great. 
fits right into what I enjoy having is just a smooth, comfortable shave, enough to last me through the day. Got Phoenix Otterson accoutrement uh, alum block here, complete with rubber band. If you haven't noticed uh, Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements PAA, uh, they have what they call a dry dock uh, for this. So in other words, you don't necessarily have to put it back into the case like I've got here. Uh, it's a, a mat, if you will, that you can place your uh, alum block on and let it sit out so it stays dry. I haven't had too much trouble just putting it back in here because what I do is I just take a little bit on my t-shirt, wipe off the end that I'm using, and I just place it right back in. Uh, did that for my first one for what I don't know two years or whatever it was it always seemed to work out just fine for me uh, not saying you may may or may not have an issue yourself you try that kind of routine but for me works just fine because it's usually when I if you notice over through my videos my face is usually not too terribly wet so uh, it doesn't take a whole lot for me to uh, dry the allen block off and put it back in there but if you're in other words, your face is somewhat wet, atom block is wet, you, it might be a, a good thing to do to find a place to put it to dry. I've been looking at them. Try that routine, see if it works for me. I haven't quite pulled the trigger on it yet. I'm still not sure about it. <laughs> because then the other part of it is if you got that dry dock, that little pad, the pad's got to go somewhere. Where are you going to put the pad? And in this bathroom, yeah, there's no place to put the pad. I'd have to figure out what would I have to move around in order to make it fit. And be honest with you, I don't think I'm going. To, I don't think I'll be able to make it fit because that, that case right there only takes up just a little bit of room. And the pad, of course, is going to be bigger than the uh, Allen block itself. By the way, that witch hazel has uh, peppermint and menthol in it, and uh, definitely feels great on the face. Since strength of the soap, I would say. Um, maybe on the mild side, it's not a real strong scent strength on the soap, but, uh, it is a, uh, what I would consider if they're not that I'm into this sort of thing, uh, consider this to be a summer scent because it's, uh, a clean, uh, not scent strength light, but it's a light type of, uh, scent to it. It's not heavy. Next video. I use a club pan aftershave. And you, if you've used these two, you'll understand what I'm saying. In other words, this one here has a much heavier scent. It's a darker, I guess you might say deeper scent than uh, what this is. This is a, definitely, I would consider a, a, a summer scent. Uh, I wear it year round. I wear it whenever I want to. I do like this scent though. Uh, it's not necessarily bright, but it does have a clean scent to it. Scent profile, couldn't tell you. Uh, when I looked at uh, Italian Barber to see what it was, you know, there, you can look to see what they have to say about it, but I didn't really pick up a, uh, uh, you know, in other words, it doesn't have a citrus to it or anything like that. It doesn't list it out like that, whether it's got tonka bean or whatever the case might be. Had a great shave. I hope my video turned out great today. I had to redo my my con configuration here this morning. Hope everybody's doing well. Stay healthy and stay safe and smooth shades to you.